Hello, everybody. Now, welcome to the 2020 draft preview. Pom, we sat in, I feel like it was Starbucks on Exhibition Street this time last year going through. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, going through all the potential picks. Uh, we're going to do the same thing this year. We're going to have a look at five names with different categories this year. And uh, I can see you've got the jacket on, mate. Got the draft jacket. Mate, this is where you <laughs> come out to shine, <laughs> mate. You've been, pr you've been preparing for this for 12 months. And this is, this is, your, this is your finals, mate. It is, yeah. This, I mean, this is the build-up for the entire year is for this moment. It's been a tough year as well because we haven't had the junior footy, so... This is more whimsical than before. So uh, exciting times, though. Good it's going to be a staple of the channel, mate. Pom's draft preview. You nailed it last year. I think we had Brody Kemp. Yeah. Had Josh Honey. Josh Honey. Yeah, in the preview. You nailed them. Um, so talk to me about today. What are we looking at today? And, and give us the names and, and what we should be looking out for. So with the complexity of this year's draft, with NGA picks being the final year for them, also a lot of clubs indicating they're going to take one pick. This section is what we're calling up and down. So this is potentially where Cowton might, there's been talk with the pick, the two picks in the 30s, we may use them. Mm. And the AFL calculator, that could get you a pick from 16 to 20. So these guys may be someone that we look at going up for. Or like last year, Devitt Robertson, people slide. And I'd say you're going to see at least three or four guys in the top 20 slide this year. Just because of the NGAs, this might be something that we're looking at and hoping they slide to that magical 31 pick. So these are guys that could go either way. Yeah, it could go either way. They could stay where they are and we think, right, let's go and grab them and d use our two picks to trade up. Yep. Or it could be something like the Devitt Robertson moment where they just dramatically slide. Okay, so let's go through them. Who are they and what do they do? So we've got Bailey Laurie first up. So this guy is someone that is anticipated to go between 10 and 20. Yep. So he's a very early pick. Outside midfielder and he also plays small forward. So he fits the category of what we're probably looking for in this draft. A lot of the pundits... I think all the fans as well would say a small forward who is actually a small forward is probably a necessity. Not a midfielder turn into a small forward. Yeah, so th this guy, the work's been done for us. He was an outside midfielder, now predominantly playing in the small forward position. And you can see here his strengths are quite clean. He's got elite IQ, real X-factor type player. He's got dancing feet, real good endurance as well. As always, the negatives, and it seems to be a constant. Uh, like a consistent thing is consistency yeah, with, with draftees. Yeah, and and with all draftees, really, it's it's one of them things. And obviously, the size he's kind of undersized for that AFL level. What we've brought in this year as well, which is a bit different, is we've actually gone through their AFL testing, their combine testing, yep. and created a yellow, green, and purple. Purple being my favourite colour of where that would actually represent if they were an AFL footballer at this stage. This is from the combine testing. Yeah, so oh. it's from the combine testing. Added and a few bits and pieces this really, year, yeah, mate. They, we always you add. Go. And we've also added this as well, you know, with their contested work, their disposals and their consistency, how that would mirror up if we use the AFL rating system based on their junior footy. Mm. This guy, as you can see, is very efficient with his use. As you can see, 76.6% efficiency last year. And, you know, he's got a good ceiling, good speed, it's kind of fits the bills, ticks the, bo ticks the boxes for me. Yep. Would I trade up for him? Probably not. I think it might be overs for someone like this, but he is a very good player, Billy Lock. And Bailey Laurie. If yeah. he was someone that would slide on the contrary, would you be nabbing him? Like if he got to 31? I think if, he's, if he slides down to 31, uh, I'd say you'd be all over it because he's one of the top small forwards in the competition. Yeah, right. Who's coming through? Okay. The, the next one we've got is my favourite. So uh, there's two here that I really love. This is one of them is Caleb Poulter. So uh, he's an inside and outside midfielder and he's also a small forward. So this guy ticks three boxes. He's a Carlton player, mate. He, he, he's a Carlton player. He's well, we, versatile. He plays every role. Well, well, we know Teague has an obsession with versatility. Mm -hmm. It's something that he's talked about and this guy has got it all. And what is really important for me as small forwards is his ability to tackle. And he does that in abundance. And he also hurts the scoreboard, which is really important as well for us. Some of his improvement, he, he, even though he's good at tackling, his forward pressure isn't the greatest. But mm -hmm. it is something that I would think would be very easily worked on. You can see, though, he accumulates the ball a mass amount. 252 just under five inside 50s. And also he brings players into the game. 1.3 goal assists is very good for him. 25.2 disposals a game. He's 192 cent. He's a big boy. Yeah, well, you see, this guy here is what I was thinking when I picked this guy. And there's another guy we'll talk about in this section as well. Yeah. Is Charlie Kern a potential replacement? Right. Do we know where he's going? We know three tolls is a is a key to Teague and how he plays. Mm. I would say that this guy is similar to 
old mate Charlie, and I think that's the third tall we need. We need someone who's athletic. We need someone who's versatile. You can't play three static talls, and this kid potentially could be that safety net for Charlie. So how does he get categorised as a small forward? Is it because he plays better at the ground level as opposed to being a big marking force? Yeah, uh, he's played all across there. He has lined up as a key forward. I mean, you'd say the traditional definition of him would be a medium forward. He can play tall and small. I mean, literally, this guy is like the Brodie Kemp of the forward line. He can play anywhere. Okay. And he has, difference between him and Kemp, is he has made his career as a midfielder. It's his forward craft that's been worked on this year. So another intriguing target. Very, very. I like I like his name. I don't know. There's something about his name. That Good just, name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Not, no bad name. And yeah. he's a South Australian as well. So we know that South Australians genuinely are quite tough to the ball as well. Yeah. yeah. Fits this. It gets stuck in. So exciting prospect for us. Okay. Next up. The next one is a guy that we, we recognise this surname in midfielders, and that's Finlay McRae. Finlay. Great name, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of a UK type vibe. It's very you? Irish, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I'm in it. Now, this kid here, Victorian product, he's going to go somewhere between 10 and 20. Now, one of the key facets of this guy's game is his ability to hit targets with both feet. Right. Which is very rare. Yeah, in, in this day and age, because yeah. the kids aren't practicing that. Yeah, he's very composed, got good IQ, and he's also very good with both handball and his ability to kick. So his efficiency is very good. Yep. Now, the negatives are probably his speed. His first 10 meters is poor. We don't need any more speed in this team, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah I get you. But, but I, know, I know we love speed here at Carlton. Oh, mate. But this guy... What he lacks in speed, he makes for him composure. I would say he, he kind of reminds me a lot like his namesake at the Doggies in the terms of he finds the ball, he's very cool, he hits the targets. His negative being the point of difference, he's very same he's very like McRae. If you watch McRae play in the AFL, the Doggies, you wouldn't say he's exciting. Mm-hmm. He's not someone who can take a game away from a team. Does but, his job. Yeah, but he reminds me very much of a Mark Murphy. Don't be, don't be throwing yeah, that. No, uh, like young Mark Murphy, like that kind of oh. guy that just finds the pill and he keeps the chains rolling. Gotcha. And I think you need them midfielders. And if we were to look at a midfielder, this kid fits the bow. And you can see here, like his ceiling, it's going to be good to elite. Yeah. His vertical, it doesn't really matter. That's the only below average. But this is a big one here, his agility and his endurance, elite factors. Yeah. So he moves like an, an otter. Okay, so 10 to 20. Again, if, he, if he's available at 31... You jump on him? Is he one of those types of players? I, th- I think this would be something that if uh, Austin is looking for another mid, and I would say we'd probably lack an accumulator in the midfield. Yep. I think Walsh could become that, but I think that would probably be detriment to Walsh's game. I think he's a lot more than just the standard 30-40 touch player. Yep. I think I think every team needs one, and I think he could be that okay. if that's what he wants. Yeah. The next guy is a guy called Braden Cook, so again, a medium forward. As you can see, 189. Um, decent size as well, 82 kgs for a kid. 15 to 25, and he comes from the mecca of football, doesn't he? Western Australia, we yeah, love We love a, a WA boy. boy, yeah. 15 to 25, so this guy potentially could slide. And you can see here he's very versatile, and that's a big thing that I'll look for in these players. We know what Teague likes. He loves a guy that is versatile. Yeah. He can play, he has played tall, he can play small. Real athletic, so we know we love an athletic forward. We love an athletic f- project, don't and, we? And the good thing here as well is an intriguing one. One of his strengths, matchups. He's really awkward as a matchup. When he's been playing junior footy and in his brief stint in seniors, he's shown that he's a handful. He's r- even though he's not the biggest bloke, yep. he seems to just be able to find a, wor- a will. And it's, it reminds me of Mr. Kerno, because Kerno doesn't look on paper hard to match up, but because of his movement, yep. he's hard. Yeah. He's awkward. Yeah, exactly. He's I hard like to do. And like you it. see there, he's And he did this at senior level, you were saying. He yeah. Played some, he he's pl- played some senior footy yeah. and he's shown that he's a tough matchup. You see his negatives finishing. He, he doesn't, he kind of gets caught when you watch him and you look at his stats, kind of gets caught in what to do. He tries to do too much. Yep. That can be ironed out at AFL level. And obviously, you can see he's probably not the most muscular. He's heavy set, but he's yeah. not muscular. But we've got the best fitness guru well, yeah. in the world, they say. I mean, if, you, if he's a professional athlete, he'd be putting on that muscle. You know. Well, we, we we see our players do put on muscle very quickly recently. Yeah. Like, look at Brody Kemp. He yeah. has an ox. So, yeah, mean, yeah. This guy just needs to go down the sizzler and, oh, you can eat steak. He'll be fine. Easy done. But this guy here, the next one, is the guy that he could slide. He's he, We always have a draft bolter, a guy that comes from nowhere. I've got a vibe about this guy. You're really excited about Co- him. Connor Stone is that. Now, this is 
a dream. I would say he. Rem- I get Cooter vibes from this guy. Okay. Cooter vibes. Cooter vibes. Yeah, that's a big call. That's that. a big call. Big call. Are, are, we, are we going there? But hey, uh, l- uh, talk to me. Why? Why? Well, he he he's just does everything. Okay. So you can see he's at he's tall tall forward. So he's on the low end of a tall forward scale at one eighty nine. Yep. Bigger body. Plays inside midfield as well. So he's got that versatility that we always talk about Charlie Kerner, don't we? we? Yeah, Play him on the ball. Play these, him on the um, ball. These attributes remind me, make me think of Charlie Kerner. And he's got IQ, great IQ. He's highly athletic. So that's where that cooter thing comes in. Gotcha. He, he's, he's very good around the ground. He's very good in the air. Great set shot technique. And he bags the goals. Obviously, again, like cooter, not the fastest player. But doesn't matter when you can run all day and when you're that size. And his consistency, I mean, that is a common negative with... A lot of these kids, well, they're kids. They're not professionals. They've got uh, things going on in their life. For the most part, they're, what, 16, 17, right? So you can understand, for the most part, why consistency comes up. And my my, my theory on the tall forward, playing the third forward, is I don't think we've got the depth in tall forwards. I think that if Kerno is out, you... There's talk TDK goes there, but in my opinion, why would you move TDK in the forward line when he can play rock? Yeah. Third forward isn't a tough job in football, so you could give it to a kid. They've had success there before. And you can see here as well, like his ceiling is elite, and that is a key here because this kid can, I would say, this kid could reach the heights, reach the heights and be one of these players that if he gets drafted 28, 29, we do the draft 10 years' time, we're like, how the hell was that kid not a top five pick? Mm-hmm. So I like this kid. Connor Stone would yeah. be probably my pick of the bunch if I was going out and so doing these. if there's a crazy situation where ev- all five of these guys mysteriously draw a slide and we get to pick 31 and they're all available, Connor Stone is your guy? Yeah, well, Connor Stone was predicted about six months ago to be outside the top 50. Yeah. Then now some put, I've seen some AFL draft mock-ups. He's been top 15. Some have got him in the 30s. He's definitely someone that a lot of the clubs are looking at, and I think he would fit us. Yep. Fantastic. All right. Well, there you go. There's the the ups and downs. So the sliders slash bolters, we'll call them. Uh, and that's been uh, this episode of the Draft Preview. Cheers, Pom. Cheers, mate. <laughs>